an office romance where the two leads are bantering back and forth and I'm like, where's your enemy? It cannot possibly be that white man over there that's telling you to loosen up. Howdy people, Julie here, with an I, no E, no Y, that's July. Today we're here to correct a misconception a lot of y'all seem to have. The fact that nobody seems to be properly using the term enemies to lovers. Because nowadays when I see enemies to lovers recommended, which is my favorite trope, by the way, I need it to be done correctly. When I see enemies to lovers, it's like an office romance where the two leads are bantering back and forth. And I'm like, where's your enemy? It cannot possibly be that white man over there that's telling you to loosen up. There has to be some sort of element involved. You have to be influential enough and important enough to be considered my girl's enemy. The criteria for that is A, actual killing involved, B, violence involved, or C, some sort of deathly rivalry, some external force that like makes you have to consider them an enemy. Because if there's no killing involved, is it really even romantic? Just to give you an example of something I see a lot. Twisted Hate by Anna Huang is often classified as enemies to lovers. However, the main characters get together very quickly. They bicker, they consider each other annoying in some ways. They fundamentally disagree with each other. They found each other annoying over the years. However, they then end up in a relationship very quickly. Now, do I consider that enemies to lovers? No, not to say that those books aren't great because I love those books. I eat it up. That's awesome in its own right. However, I do believe that that should be in a different category than enemies to lovers. If anything, I'm not in love with this name, but the best way I can describe that is like dislike to lovers because at least it describes the threat level at which this person is standing is not your enemy. So I thought today I would give you some examples of real enemies to lovers because this is kind of my shit. It's my favorite trope. I might do a separate video to give you dislike to lovers examples so that we can fully contrast, but I really wanted to give you some of the best talk to your enemies to lovers that I have read because I'm very particular about it. A good first example of an enemies to lovers would be Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This I believe is truly enemies to lovers because killing is on the table. When Violet Sorengale decides to join the writer's quadrant or the writing school in order to become a dragon writer, and by join I mean she was forcibly put into it by her mother against her will. She runs into Zayden Rearson. Her sister actively warns her against associating with him because their mother is responsible for his father's death. And so he already has this bias against her. He was very vengeful towards her, her entire family. And on top of that, when you go into the writer's quadrant, killing is allowed. So there are a bunch of obstacles up until threshing. When you get your dragon, you are allowed to kill pretty much anyone in your path. So even going into the quadrant, you are more likely to die because you have to cross this bridge. They meet each other and she's like, are you gonna kill me? And he goes, why would I waste my breath killing you when the bridge will probably do it? Does not care about her survival. He's actively rooting against her and there's a rivalry between their two families. So that is a perfect example of quintessential enemies to lovers. I think that it built up for such a great story because, and this is the reason I love enemies to lovers, is because you really have to look past all of that and get to know them as a person in order to change your mind. And Zayden even mentions, I don't know when I fell in love with her. Was it when I noticed that she traded one of her shoes with her friend because to help her cross the bridge because she knew that if she wore those slippery shoes, she was going to fall and die? Was it when I saw her defend a baby dragon? All these cute, beautiful moments that forced him to consider her as a human rather than somebody to have a rivalry with. So I think that is a perfect example of enemies to lovers. And I just did a full book video on my like review of it in real time. I'll link it down below if you want a more detailed reaction from me on that book. But I think that's a perfect first example. The second example that I'm going to give of enemies to lovers is the Shatter Me series as a whole. If you haven't heard of it, it's a dystopian novel about Juliet. Juliet has unfortunately a power that kills anyone who touches her. So she's spent a lot of her life in isolation. She doesn't have any family. In this like insane asylum, she meets a guy who's really, really nice to her. His name is Adam. And it's kind of like the first person that number one is nice to her and number two, can touch her for some reason. So she ends up liking him and at the same time, she meets Aaron Warner, the best, 
the tops book boyfriend. Juliet, because of her association with Adam and everything she knows about Warren, because his father is the ruler of this like very corrupt society that they're a part of, Warner has to like present himself in a light that is consistent with his father's message, which is that he's a cruel, very cold, resistant person. And Juliet notices him do very questionable things. Obviously they're explained away, but in the moment she's like, he's killing people. He's making me hurt people. Destructive and ruinous and that's all she can see and so she hates him and I think at one point she shoots him and honestly like if you can come back from a shooting that's amazing but he is down bad for her okay but in her perspective this is her enemy she wants to hurt him like she thinks he's a bad person it built up a lot of tension and when she slowly gradually gets to know Aaron as Aaron and not as Warner this like big bad leader in the army she finally accepts the fact that he knows her better than anyone for some reason on some level understands her and wants her to become the best that she could possibly be he does doesn't see her power as a bad thing. I feel like Adam really regarded it as like something she had to control. Warner was like, I cannot imagine the power you have. I think this was such a good enemies to lovers because she really reveled in the fact that he thought she was un- limitless. Whereas Adam really wanted to like squash her down. Warner wanted to build her up. I feel like as women, it's a very sad thing that we always want to like curl in and take up as little space as possible. And I feel like Adam was almost encouraging her to do that. And the minute that she started to grow, he was like, no, that's not what we want to do. But Warner was like, absolutely yes. I love who you're becoming. And he just kind of encouraged that from her. I love when powers are put into play and how when you have character development, you also have have power development. I personally love that. And so if you're interested in things like that in this dystopian world where powers exist, I definitely recommend it. I've only read the first three books because at the time when I read it, those were the only books that were supposed to exist. Tahara Mafi then came out with three other books. I will read it because I'm obsessed with Aaron and Juliet. Lift your hips for me, love. Yes, sir, I will. The next book that I'm going to talk about is These Violin Delights by Chloe Gong, and the main characters are Roma and Juliet. Now, Roma and Juliet have an interesting enemies to lovers. When they were little kids, even though they were rivaling families, it's very much based on Romeo and Juliet. That's why their names are very similar. Roma is a Russian gang, and Juliet is an Asian gang. But as children, they were best friends, and then they were in a relationship. And unfortunately, something really horrible happens. They hint at it, they don't really say it in the beginning, but basically you get the gist that Roma did something that completely destroyed Juliet. It's set in the 1920s, so it's also like very old and traditional. They grow up apart after this horrible thing happens, and they're still in rival gangs, but something happens that is threatening both of their sides, and they decide to put their differences aside to work together. Juliet doesn't know why Roma did something to her. She very much is treating him as an enemy, and only a means to an end when they decide to work as a team and Roma is kind of like standoffish just as a result of the way she's acting and like rightfully so he did something horrible I gave this book four stars but I did really like the setting of it and also the way that it was written was just very interesting to me I particularly like this example just because it's in a different time setting it's like a Romeo and Juliet readaptation I really liked it so go ahead and check that out the next example is Chris Six Venom by Penelope Douglas. This example, I believe, qualifies as enemies to lovers, not because like killings on the table, it's about high school girls, so like chill. The reason that I think that this is considered enemies to lovers instead of dislike to lovers is because the girls genuinely mean harm to each other. They want to hurt the other. Olivia and Clay both go to the same school, they're on the same sports team, but Clay seems to have it out for Olivia. So as a response, Olivia obviously wants to defend herself, so they end up doing some bad shit to each other. Normally I wouldn't consider like a high school rivalry a good enemies to lovers, but in this sense, the way that they came after each other was low-key like bullying. Ruthless what they were doing to each other, and I was like, girls. And of course, this stems from like repressed feelings, like is hiding the fact that she's a lesbian. I think there's a difference between somebody who's not out to their friends versus not out to their self. Clay very much falls in the latter part of that category because she does not understand her fixation with Olivia and why she wants to hurt her so bad. And so like she does things to like terrorize her and so Olivia is forced to respond. Olivia confronts her, basically saying like, why am I your enemy? Clay kind of crumbles. This book I feel was a really good bullying to love 
lovers versus enemies puppies. I don't usually like bullying. Low-key traumatizing to read about. It's a little much, but I think it fits the trope extremely well. And the story overall was very satisfying to me. I gave 4.5 stars. The next book that I'm going to talk about, I really couldn't get through this video without mentioning this book, of course. Akatar, A Court of Thrones and Roses is the first one, and A Court of Mist and Fury is the second, and then A Court of Wings of Ruin is, is the third one. Enemies to Lovers does not fit the first book. Feyre is human. She is entering the world of the Fae because she accidentally killed one of them, and as payment, she has to go live in their land. Their lands are separated by a wall, and so Tamlin, one of the leaders of the courts, the Spring Court, takes her as payment into his land. She goes and lives with him, and they end up falling in love. Unbeknownst to her, there's a very, very powerful war going on. This whole time there's a curse, so Tamlin has a lot of enemies. His enemy is Rhysand, who is the High Lord, the Court of Nightmares. And so when Feyre, who's only met Tamlin, is loyal to him, obviously her loyalties are against Rhys. Rhys also does some questionable things because he was being held in this very precarious hostage situation by a very powerful person. And so he also ended up threatening Feyre and Tamlin as well. So so like that all gets explained but in the first book it's very much set up that she does not want anything to do with Reese. obviously that changes in the second book guys i do not recommend court of mist and fury enough it's the second book of the series you gotta get through book one to get to it it's so worth it i tell everybody this not only is the love story great but the found family in that found family is something i'm such a sucker for the found family, the fact that Feyre like feels such at home, and if I were allowed to visit any fictional place, I'd want to visit the fictional place that's set in book two. I've never felt so connected to a place in my life. The things that they do for this place, the things that happen, the way that Rhys and Feyre and everyone in their court goes to lengths to protect this place, to make sure that it's a safe place for a bunch of people, and to make sure that they can preserve their family that has been built in this place. Gorgeous. I cannot say it enough how much I love the second book and I'm going to do a rereading soon of that whole series because I'm just in love with it. Can't recommend it enough and like I couldn't get throughout this video without recommending that because it's just like the way that they build their relationship because like they love a slow burn and even though the transition between enemies to lovers did happen only in one book or two books I still felt it was so natural. That's why I like enemies to lovers so much because the work that has to be done for me to be convinced that you are not a horrible human being and that I can actually trust you and then upon that love you is crazy and rewarding at the same time. There's so much build up how they end up trusting each other. I've never read anything like that. It was a high stakes fantasy, but they spent so much time developing the relationship between the main couple and I loved it. Reese is amazing. He's so good. And so if you guys haven't read that series, you like something fantastical with powers and with different magical elements, and a great enemies to lovers, I would definitely recommend the Aquatar series. It's beautiful, I love it. The next book that I'm gonna talk about is Scarred from the Never After series. This wasn't my favorite book, but I do think it is a great example of enemies to lovers, and maybe it'll be your favorite book. Like I say this all the time, like just because I read a book kind of low, it doesn't mean that it's not for everyone. Like it might be your favorite book, and I would not want to not recommend it because I just personally didn't like it. So basically the whole series is dark fairy tale retellings. Scarred is a play on Scar from The Lion King. So the main character is Tristan Fossa and his brother is Michael Fossa. Tristan is very much a rebel. He doesn't get to be in line for the crown, but his brother does, even though he is a horrible leader, and very corrupt. Now because he's going to be king, his father just died, so he was just my king. He does have to get married. So he became betrothed to Sarah. Unbeknownst to the both of them, Sarah is from a village that hates the fossil line and so her uncle and like the people in her family have trained her to hunt all of the fossa men so she wants to kill them because she blames them for the death of her father so she comes into this kingdom absolutely hating tristan and michael and at the same time, Tristan is also a rebel and he's secretly building up an army to overtake his brother. And at first he doesn't know where Sarah stands because she is trying to endear Michael to her so that they can get closer and she can learn a little bit more about how to take down this kingdom. I feel like this was a good example of enemy lovers because they do consider killing each other, like killing and violence are on the table. And they almost reluctantly love each other. And this is one of the problems I have with the book. They were like, if I could kill you, I would but I love you, so I can't. 
what? Even though upon finding that he's like a rebel, she still doesn't know if he's a good guy. Like he's definitely has a reputation of being very dark, very sinister. He just needed therapy. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. But very good example of the trope if you are into fairy tale retellings and dark romances might be a book for you. So those are my enemies to lovers recommendations. I hope you guys understand the distinction I'm making between true enemies to lovers versus dislike to lovers. I would like to make a part two of this because obviously this was only a very couple amount of enemies to lovers. I have a lot more. If you'd like a part two, like and subscribe. Please leave me any and all recommendations that you have. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Look at how I started from the street Look at how I started from the ghetto